holy temple. Let us remain silent before him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Let us pray. Heavenly Master, as we have gathered today to worship you, we thank you for the mercies and the blessings that you pour upon us each and every day as our family members remain protected, remain safe under your wings. We thank you, Lord. And we have come together today on bended knee to say, Thank you to lift up your name, worship you, and adore your name. Father, as we begin this worship service, be with us. Send your Holy Spirit to move us. And as each and every family member of our church sees this, let them be blessed. Let their hearts be warmed by your presence. In your precious name we pray. Amen. The opening hymn for today is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Let us sing together. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, Lord of glory, Lord of love, hearts and Psalm 139 To the Chief Musician A Psalm of David O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. 
Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. Let us all read the Apostles' Creed. Let us unite in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us sing the Gloria Patri. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. We will have a time of praise and worship now. Let us worship our Lord together. In Philippians chapter 2 and 1 John, we read that we should be one being in one spirit and one mindset as Christ, so that we shall be like Christ as we see Him. With this promise of God's word, let us praise God by singing this beautiful song. Change of heart and transformation is required as we grow in Christ. At the same time, we need to repent and overcome all our sins. 
who face our Lord at the day of the judgment. Let us sing our last song before we listen to the word of God. Change my heart, O God. Change my heart, O God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. You are the wonder. I am the king. Hold me and make me. This is your life. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning you have given to us, Lord. As we gather today under your sanctuary, Lord, to praise you and glorify you and to worship you, Lord. Be with us through the every aspects of this service, Lord. We believe your presence with us, Lord, and let your word speak to us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let us have the pastoral prayer now. Bow your heads down. Look into yourselves, into your hearts, and let us pray earnestly to God. Heavenly Father. We come on bended knee today, worshipping you, adoring you, glorifying your name. But we know that the world is in unrest. The world is going through great pain and struggle. The people, our neighbors, are going through this pain. The poor that live around us. The workers that depend on daily wages are going through pain. Yet, O oh Lord, you have kept us safe from all harm and danger. You have provided us all the needs that we require, that our family requires. Hence, Father, give us the eyes to look out for those that are in need, so that we all as creation can pull through during this hard time. We have to look after each other as you look after us, O oh Lord. Your tenets, your values and your love has to flow out from our hearts into the community. As last Sunday we looked at the Pentecost Sunday, O oh Lord, it is all for the world to receive the word of God through us. Give us the heart and the courage to do so. Father, we thank you. We, we, we really praise you, O Lord, for this time. You have made us to meet each other even though it was not possible physically. You have given us this medium and we are using that, O Lord, to praise you. We thank you, Lord, for every single breath that we take. We never could realize that how many times we have taken every single breath as granted. Today we thank you for that, O oh Lord. Today we praise you for that. And we especially pray for our nation as it is going through so many troubles, both in the health department, even the financial status of the nation is struggling to cope up. Many businesses have gone into loss. Many of the people have lost their jobs. Even, even many of our church members are struggling a lot today with their finances. It has somehow crept into the families. But yet, you give us the means to survive. You give us the means to pull through this time. And as you walk with the Israelites, through 
the sea, so are you walking with us to the sea. Not only that, but we believe you are leading us to the sea. You are guiding us. We know that. We pray for every infected person. We pray for your hands of comfort to touch, to heal and to give them confidence, O Lord, and hope. We pray for all those in our church who are not keeping well of other ailments. Father, we pray that you will supply with, to them the strength, that you will bless the medicines that they are taking and therefore that they may bounce back to normalcy. We pray for every patient who is also struggling with this pandemic to bounce back to health and to normalcy. We pray for all the institutions and the hospitals that are taking care of all the patients, the nurses, the doctors, the ward boys who are doing a commendable job. Supply to them, O oh Lord, great strength, endurance and perseverance so that they can take care of the people of the nation. We pray for Maharashtra and its districts as we have come to know that Maharashtra is the most affected state we pray for Maharashtra, all its districts, especially Mumbai, our city. Father, turn your eyes toward us. Heal us. We want to receive healing over this land, this beautiful land that you have given to us. And forgive us if there is anything wrong that we have done to hurt creation, to hurt nature. Father, we pray and we want to submit all the churches, the homes and the worship centers that are observing today as the Sabbath day. All the bishops, all the pastors, all the preachers who are going to speak the word of God today. All the missionaries who are still in the mission field who are going to give the word of God today. We pray for them a lot. May your anointing be on them. May the words be anointed as they come out of their mouth. Let them touch the hearts of the people. Let the people be convicted of you afresh. We pray for the world. We pray that all of us as the citizens of the world can understand that life is the most important gift that you have given to us. And that preservation of life is of the utmost importance right now. Race, caste, creed, gender, all these things don't matter. Lord, give us the heart to see clearly what we are supposed to do and help each other. We want to submit ourselves and we want you, O oh Lord, to look into our hearts and see all the prayers that we cannot spell out in front of anybody. All the petitions that are hidden within us. So that you can see them. And you can answer them in due time. We want to submit all of these things into your hands, O Lord. And especially the word that is to be spoken. Bless us. And be with us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us read the scripture portion today, which is taken from the book of Jonah, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Jonah, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, 
and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the current swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me, seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down, the earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought me life up from my pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. May the Lord add his blessings to the scripture portion. Before we listen to the word of God, we will sing the hymn, Seeking the Lost and Kindly Entreating, after which we will hear the word of God from our senior pastor, Reverend Tennyson Peter. Let us sing. Seeking the lost, yes, kindly entreating, wander us on the Mountain astray, come unto me, this message repeating, words of the master speaking today. Going afar, going afar, going afar, upon the mountain, bringing the word, bringing the word, Rebecca. Into the fall, the fall of my redeemer, Jesus the Lord, Jesus the Lord, for sinners pain, for sinners pain. Seeking the lost and pointing to Jesus, so that are we. So, leading them forth in ways of salvation, showing the path to life evermore. Going afar, going afar, afar upon the mountain, bringing the one, bringing the one above. Into the fall, the fall of my Redeemer, Jesus the Lord, Jesus the Lord, for sinners slain, for sinners slain. Thus I would go on missions of mercy, following Christ from Good morning and praise be to God. I am grateful to God for bringing all of us together once again in this manner to 
worship the lord this morning i would like to speak to you from the life of jonah which is a very interesting character the moment when you hear the name jonah the children would be enjoying and children will be eager to hear the story once again and cherish their sandy school memories but today we are not going to you know think only in terms of the story narrated in the book of jonah but we are going to read in the context in which we live and um, before we go into the passage let us look to the lord in prayer gracious and loving heavenly father we want to thank you and praise you for this day as we are gathered here to meditate the word of god we want you to help us to understand the truth there are there in the book of jonah hide me and enable me to bring the word that you want me to speak to your people encourage us empower us illuminate us and teach us so that we can learn a lesson to follow in the days to come in th- in jesus most precious name i pray amen the book of jonah is having only 48 verses it is called minor prophetic books just because it is having lesser words it is called minor prophet but his message it was a powerful message and the book of jonah has contained a very important message he was living in the time of jeroboam a two 786 bc to 740 bc we read in second kings chapter 14 25 the word jona means dove the city of nineveh is the capital of assyria it was built by nimrod was a rich city and um, it is in the upper mesopotamia or we can say today's northern iraq it is um, surrounded by tigris river very large it has got about 15 gates they were worshiping the fertility goddesses so today nineveh is called or mosul iraq it is a trade center commercial center people from different walks of life flock in they have uh, good tourism spots money flows like anything people have uh, plenty of money and the immoral life is rampant i just want you to see what is spoken in the new testament if you turn with me to matthew chapter 12 verses 38 to 41 the scribes and the pharisees they were asking the lord jesus christ for a sign and jesus said the evil and the adulterous generations they seek signs there shall be no sign be given to you but the sign of the prophet jonah that means jesus is very well aware of the story of jonah and how he went and gave the warning message to the people of nineveh and how they have repented and came to the lord and he further goes on to say for as jonah was 3 days and 3 nights in the belly of the fish so shall the son of man be in the heart of the earth isn't it a big revelation jesus is you know giving a comparison of his burial and the life of jonah in the belly of fish if he could be there for 3 days and 3 nights and could come out my life is also going to be there so he was giving a 
kind of picture that he is a shadow of Jonah. Okay, so this is a simple, you know, background that I would like to give to you. And also a few more thoughts. This book is a well-organized and a sophisticated book. It's an oracle, not a simple, you know, Sunday school story. It talks about the sovereignty of God. It talks about the wrath of God. It talks about the mercy of God. This morning, I just want you to think along with me on this title or heading. God stops. God stops. Okay. Let us try to understand from this book. What are the areas or what are the things God stops? If you read this first uh, few verses, here the Lord is calling Jonah to arise and go to Nineveh. He is giving him a very specific call and he has commissioned him to go. And he did not want to go. He was reluctant. He has disobeyed God and he has made his own plan or perhaps he would have had his own plan and that is why he deliberately made a plan to go to Tarshish. Tarshish is just opposite direction of Nineveh and he was in Joppa and Nineveh is just 500 miles away from Joppa. A very close by city, very reachable city, a city where he was assigned and asked by God to go. But here he comes to the port and he purchases a ticket and board in the ship which is heading 2,000 miles away. It is the modern Spain. And I was trying to understand why he had to make this decision. Why he has to make this plan. I was thinking maybe it was his original plan. Sometimes even coming to church, people say, where, where were you? Why you didn't come? No, pastor, I already fixed with my friend to go for a party. Now we were actually planned as a family to go for a wedding. And you cannot change your plan. But God wants you to go to the church. Or God wants you to attend. But you say, no, I cannot change my plan. Secondly, he did not want to go to Nineveh because he knows the country is full of wicked people. And um, they would not listen to the voice of God. They will not like a preacher coming from one other country to come and preach, he said, my going would be waste. And the third thing, the city of Nineveh is not friendly for them. They are enemies. And so why should I go and preach to these enemies? So these are you know, some of the reasons that he didn't want to go to Nineveh. Now what to do? Now he got into the ship and he was sailing with them. But God wanted to interrupt his journey. God wanted to stop him. And God was using his own you know, method to stop his journey. Dear people of God, in your life and my life, whenever we go against the will of God, whenever we disobey God, Whenever we go on our own will and purpose, the Lord will allow for a certain time and he will create a situation in which he will stop your journey. The story is known to you all and all that the Lord, you know, allowed a big wind to blow. Okay? And it is very clearly um, written over here, verse 4. 
chapter 1 verse 4 but the lord sent out a great wind on the sea and there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken then the mariners were afraid and every man cried out to his god and threw a cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load but jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship had lain down and was fast asleep when as soon as he got into the boat you know he went into the lowest deck and he was sleeping a man of god who was commissioned for some mission but he disobeyed and he went to the opposite direction and he was doing this thing any of god allowed so the captain came to him and said to him what do you mean sleeper a race call on your god perhaps your god will consider us so that we may not perish we do not know what religion he belong to but the captain made all the people those who were there in the ship to call on their god and nothing but the storm couldn't be controlled they know certainly the lord only can you know control because this is not the ordinary wind somewhere something is wrong and god wanted to do something so they sensed it it is the wrath of god but here is a man who is sleeping and he asked him he, he was interrogated and he was asked and then they cast lots and the lot fell on jonah so they found that this gentleman is a culprit and they were asking about his occupation where he come from and what are you doing and all then he had to you know confess that he is so and so and uh, he is the cause for that so he thought that he can comfortably go to tarshish but god stopped him god stopped him you know you and i very often think that that we can you know go away from the presence of god and nobody is going to see nobody is going to watch nobody is going to interrupt but god in one fine morning will interrupt you there are so many people whose life was interrupted by god you can you know take so many stories in the bible okay moses he was comfortably taking care of his father in law's flock in median but he is interrupted by god moses enough it's 40 years that you served here now i want you to go to egypt and take my people out of egypt saul he was heading towards damascus and he wanted to slaughter all the christian people and god had to interrupt and stop him many of you who are seated here i know that you and i are called by god to do something but we were going in one other direction but god had stopped you god has stopped you and you are here today otherwise you and i would have been away from the lord and we would have lost in this sin uh, lost in sin but god stops now secondly god stops the storm now how to stop the storm is not that easy and the ca- captain's instruction was very clear so they were throwing all their belongings in the sea and the other tool was they were praying to god everyone wanted to call their god and see whether their god will come and do something they had that belief because god is in control of the nature he is the creator he is a sustainer he is the redeemer from the book of genesis we know that god holds his hands upon every creature he is the creator and he has given mankind to subdue and domain over but the ultimate in a power is upon him when jesus along with his disciples when they were sailing when the when the storm was so severe the disciples were trying their level best to control they could not do it there also jesus was sleeping in the lower deck and they had to wake him up and he came up and he stopped he come the storm and so it is very well understood by the people 
that the nature would certainly obey God. And so all the other people, they prayed, nothing worked. Then finally, Jonah had to accept. Jonah had to you know, confess that he is the culprit. Because of him, the whole sailors are suffering. Because of his sin, the whole community is affected. Because of his sin, the whole ship is rattled. You know, in your life and my life, if one person commits sin, it affects the whole community, it affects the whole family. One person, Achan, he disobeyed, he hid the things, and the people of Israel, they had to, you know, face the consequence when they were heading towards capturing city of A, and they were all, you know, killed. And Joshua understood that is something wrong in us. And then he had to check all the families and find who is the culprit. And there they found Achan. So we do not know who is Achan here, who is Jonah here. But you and I will be found out one day. Here they found out Jonah. And Jonah gave them a very good solution that you better throw me in. But people weren't so happy to do that because they know that it is going to be a big issue. Anyhow, he said, and he said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea, then the sea will become calm for you. That means God will stop the storm. He knows it's because of his mistake the Lord has done. So they, verse 15, so they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea and the sea ceased from raging. So God stopped the storm. The third thing is God stopped the fish. Okay. So the moment when he was thrown in the ocean, it very clearly says, verse 17 of chapter 1, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. You know, God has prepared a place where Jonah would be accommodated, would be sheltered, would be taken care for three days and nights. So that in the three days and nights, God can mold him, God can shape him, God can make him to, you know, repent and confess to the Lord so that the Lord can, you know, forgive him. The Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. You know, God did not want to miss Jonah. Because God can only accomplish this mission only through Jonah. And so he had to protect him. He had to guard him. He had to mold him. And he has to reuse him. You know, God could have very well, you know, thrown this fellow out because he was a disobedient guy. He wasn't useful. But he did not do that. He called him. And he wanted to really you know, mold him and again commission him for the ministry. And so God had to deal with him. And so when he was in the belly of fish, he started his all night prayer, all day prayer, whatever prayer we can say, he was praying. You know, he was using all the Bible verses, all the Psalms and Lamentations. He was using all the references. If you, you know, go through these verses, you will be able to see he was using all the verses that ever he, what, whatever he has memorized. That's why in Psalm 119.11 says, I have stored up your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. You know, in the following verses, if you see Psalm 3, Psalm 31, Psalm 42, Psalm 69, 88, Psalm 120, all these Psalms, you know, are found over here. And he says, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction 
and he answered me out of the belly of seol i cried and you heard my voice you know someone has given a title for this particular chapter 2 you know god quarantined jonah okay so someone also called this as the quarantined prayer okay a person was you know put in the belly of fish for 3 days and he offered a wonderful prayer okay and he was saying that i come very closer to you lord i know you are a great god and i have a great hope and mercy and my focus is only you on you alone because i want to come and pray in the temple and i know that you are the one who can give salvation to the people and so when he confessed all those things you know god understood that this man has regretted for what he has done and he commanded he commanded the fish to go and vomit him in the ground it's very nicely said verse 10 chapter 2 verse 10 so the lord spoke to the fish and it vomited jonah onto dry land so god stopped fish from eating otherwise the fish would have you know eaten him up but god stopped you know during this corona time how many people are dying how many people are killed and you and i are kept safe you and i are quarantined by god in your own house in your own homes in your own respective places you were surrounded like whatever the scene that you see you are surrounded by the sea ocean and everything but nothing is harming you but what is god's expectation is if you and i you know cry unto the lord and if you and i you know hope in the lord for his salvation the lord will you know take you out of this danger yes this is what we are doing this is what many servants of god is in encouraging people that do not sit in your home and grief over the things that are happening around us do not you know talk always about corona 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 and all you know in this situation god is expecting the church that the lord is molding the church the lord is shaping the church and the lord wants to use the church because somewhere the church failed to carry on the mission somewhere the church went away from the presence of god somewhere the church missed the mark instead of heading to nineve we were heading to tarshish spain the church has moved to the comfortable zone once upon a time the missionaries have left their comfortable zone and they came and worked in the villages where they did not have any security any safety they have sacrificed everything they lived but today the church says that we have everything we will live we will enjoy you know church has to realize how this church was built it's the blood and sweat of the god's children but today people are selling the properties of the church people are you know misusing god's properties we have to be very careful and so god wants the church to realize so somewhere we have missed the mark the mission mandate has been forgotten and so he trained him or molded him for 3 days and 3 nights of course we are now molded by the lord for the last 3 months and now the lord has you know brought us to the shore to the land now what else god is going to do now god is going to stop his wrath upon the people god is going to stop the wrath okay chapter 3 god has given jonah the second calling god is going to give to the church the second calling and he says again word second arise go to nineve that great city and preach to it the message that i tell you 
so god is saying that you have failed to carry my message and today i give you my message you go and tell the people to repent and jonah he arose and went to nineveh according to the word of the lord now nineveh was exceedingly great city a three day journey in extent and jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk then he cried out and said okay good thing that he was not you know simply standing and preaching he cried out in his cry alone people could understand here is a man come with a compassionate heart here is a man come with a warning message here is a man who has got a message that you and i need to understand and he was not you know saying anything about repentance but he said at 40 days and ninive shall be overthrown this is a very simple word but carrying a very heavy message that means in 40 days time the ninive will be overthrown it will be destroyed at the moment it reached the king he called the entire community and he himself he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes and he proclaimed and published throughout nineve by the decree of the king and nobles saying let neither man nor beast herd nor flock taste anything do not let them eat or drink and he was calling people to cry to the almighty god and he says that who can tell if god will turn and relent and re- turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish a pagan king he could understand the wrath of god is going to be poured upon us and he is coming from the monotheistic belief they do not know who is yahweh and all but still the moment when he came and preached they all obeyed and they cried and they wept and they received god mercy today the whole world is waiting from the church a message who will go and tell them who will go and proclaim it is the wrath of god of course we are not here to condemn we are not here to you know curse the society but we need to say that it is the wrath of god because still today the whole you know uh, medical uh, mission or medical team is unable to find out vaccine it's very difficult position so god wants the whole universe to look unto him the god wants the whole universe to ask him why why lord why lord if you ask certainly the lord will answer so god wants the church to preach this message to the people so that the people would repent and god you know in his providence how nicely he forgave them words 10 i'll read then god saw their words that they turned from their evil way and god relented from disaster that he had said he would bring them upon them and he did not do it that means he stopped otherwise he would have poured the wrath upon these people now he stopped isn't it amazing god is holding his wrath in his hand but if you and i confess our sins he will stop the last thing the lord want to stop is stop jonah's anger now still jonah is not repented and jonah is really not come to the lord though he prayed and god used him but you see verse chapter 3 chapter 4 but it displeased jonah exceedingly and he became angry a man of god who should have been rejoicing when all these people you know, have you know repented and come back to the lord and his ministry was successful and he was able to accomplish what the lord wanted to do that time but here is a man he wasn't happy and he was fighting with god and he was uh, asking the lord and say is the lord i know that you will certainly do this i know that you 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 are gracious and merciful god slow to anger abundant in loving kindness one who relents from doing harm so he knows the mind of god but god wanted to still deal with him therefore now o lord please take my life from me for it is better for me to die than to live he was put to shame he 
he is uh, i think he is thinking about his own community are people will say are why did you go and make these people to you know repent and come back to the we were thinking that these people should die we thought that this uh, nineveh would be destroyed but you why did you go and do that so, so he would not even like to even face his own community or his own people so he said lord you take my life but god says isn't it right for you to be angry then again you know he went out of the city and he wanted to you know stay back and see what is going to happen still he was having little hope of destruction and the lord you know prepared a you know plant for him to you know watch this scene so he thought okay there's a plant has come so i will sit under the shadow and watch what is going to happen but as morning dawned the next day god prepared a worm and it so damaged the plant and that it uh, withered and it happened when the sun arose that god prepared a vehement east wind and the sun bit on jonah's head so that he grew faint then he wished death for himself and said it is better for me to die than to live again you know he was getting angry then god had to again deal with him then god said to jonah isn't it right for you to be angry about the plant and he said it's it's right for me to be an angry even to death but the lord said you have heard pity on the plant for which you have not labored nor made it grow which came up in a night and perished in a night you have not labored i graciously gave you a, this plant so that it will give you shade but now it is died and why you are worried about that i am worried about my people they are my people they may be your enemies they may be wicked people for me they are my people and the lord is showing his compassionate word wonderfully he says and shouldn't i pity nineveh that great city in which are more than 120000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left and much livestock he says i am concerned about the whole mankind and the animals because he is the creator and sustainer that means he is having still his global mission opened he only wanted you and me to just go and do his will not our will today sometimes preachers have our own tendency that we conveniently preach some message so that we can you know take people for ourselves but god wants you and me to preach the message so that they will repent and they will come back to god the lord intercepted the whole mission to the church he said you are the light of the world and salt of the earth but the lord has you know planted you and me here and there are we shining are we really fulfilling the will of god we are not doing god wants you to you know learn else god wants you and me to learn from this life if you and i are not you know functioning under the will of god god will stop your plans and god will you know do his will and today as you are seated let us pray to god that the message of the lord should go to the people save the people the mission of the church to seek the lost and rescue the perishing care for the dying may the lord help you and me to do his will and uh, expand his kingdom shall we look to the lord in prayer heavenly father we thank you for bringing the life story of jonah the mission that you have interested to him how he was avoiding and how he was running away from the mission and how he was put on the track to carry on the message to the people many a times we have also failed lord we have gone on our own way we have had our own agenda but lord today we want to submit now we want to know what is your mandate what is your mission plan and we want to follow you and preach the word of god help the church that we will arise and go and do the will of god we praise you and we give you all glory and honor 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A couple of announcements. Before I make the announcement, let us um, pay a one-minute tribute to late Reverend Vivek Rathod. Reverend uh, Rathod is uh, one of the best pastors in the Mumbai Regional Conference, who has joined the ministry in 2009, and um, he has served in few Marathi churches and uh, one or two English churches. And um, he, in fact, served in the Vernon Memorial Madhuris Marathi Church for two years. He was also a coordination committee chairman, very dynamic leader, good preacher, very gentleman, humble, and um, was uh, serving as the conference uh, secretary. And uh, he survived with his wife and two children. Let us remember the family and let us uphold them in our prayers. Let's pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the life of late Reverend uh, Vivek Rathod, a man of God, committed for the mission, committed for the ministry. Though he served in the conference only for 10 to 11 years, but his ministry was so fruitful, so effective. He could um, preach the word of God so sincerely. And um, he has also served the conference in the capacity of conference secretary. When we pray at this time for his wife and two children, that they would be strengthened, they would be given new direction and guidance from you so that they will be able to lead the life as congregation we remember his good life we remember his family that would lead them and guide them in Jesus name we pray Amen God willing we will be meeting next week the same time and I would encourage all of you to come sharp 10.30 so that we will all worship together and praise our Lord. The members, those who are celebrating their birthdays are displayed over here. You can read their names. Let us pray that the Lord would continue to lead them and guide them. So on behalf of the congregation, the pastor, I wish them a wonderful birthday and happy wedding anniversaries. The closing hymn for today is Rescue the Perishing, Care for the Dying. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave.
provide back to the narrow way patiently when the tell the poor wanderer a savior has died rescue the perishing care for the dying Jesus is merciful Jesus will save Let us have the closing prayer. Gracious Heavenly Master, as you have spoken to us today, you have helped us to realize the truth behind the word that has been written in the Bible. Keep creating this hope within us, O Lord. We want to keep our hearts open to listen to you. We want to keep our hearts open so that you can touch us and heal us and always show to us where we need to change and what we need to do. We want to submit this time and we thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit was there with us to counsel us, to provide clarity to us in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for your presence and we know that your presence will always be with us. It will always abide with us throughout our lives. We submit this time and the worship service into your hands. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may rest and abide with us all, both now and for evermore. Amen.